I want to deal with the blood in a whole different uh, realm that very few probably realize that we need to apply it on our lives. Remember, the application of the blood is both in the Old and New Testament because in the Old Covenant, uh, Moses and others applied it with hyssop. And hyssop is symbolic of faith, of course. Hyssop is a plant that still grows today on walls, if you, if you can believe it, in the Holy Land. And uh, so David said, wash me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Remember that? So hyssop is faith. So in the New Testament today, we apply the blood with our confession. And one of these days, when the battle rages in the heavenlies with Michael and God's angels, the great archangel Michael with God's angels against the enemy Satan and his angels. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony in Revelation 12. Well, that they could not be the angels. Then the church was participating in the victory uh, of, of that day that's coming. Well, here we see the application of the blood against Satan and bring in destruction and defeat. Hallelujah. So we, we, we see throughout the word of God that the blood has to be applied. Uh, when we walk into God's presence and ask him to cleanse us, what are we doing? We're applying the blood. We're asking him to cleanse us with the blood. But in Leviticus 14, it talks about the application of the blood on a former leper. Now, leprosy in the Bible is always uh, it's, it's symbolic of sin. So, in, and you know, these are misunderstood portions by some people uh, in the Old Covenant, but they're really, once you see it by the Spirit, it, it, it enlightens you. Let's read. And the Lord, I'm reading verse 1, Leviticus 14. And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest. Now, the leper, symbolically here, is the sinner. He shall be brought to the priest, the Lord Jesus. The priest shall go forth out of the camp. Jesus went out of the camp, outside the city of Jerusalem, to die and shed his blood. And the priest shall look and behold if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper. Then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed. Now, this is all prophetic. Two birds alive to be cleansed. Two birds alive and clean. So for the leopard to be cleansed, two birds. And cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. All are symbolic of what the Lord did. The two birds, one is symbolic of his death, one his resurrection. Cedar wood, the cross. Scarlet, his suffering. Hyssop, faith. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel. The Lord Jesus was slain physically. That's the earthen vessel over running water, according to the scriptures. That's what it means when it says over running water. As for the living bird, he shall take it, and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times. And shall pronounce him clean. And shall let the living bird loose into the open field. This is incredible. Ah, this is incredible. Watch this. He takes a bird, he kills it. That's the death of Christ. Now, in an open vessel, meaning his body will be slain on the cross. Then he takes the living bird and he adds to that living bird, listen now, 
cedar wood, the cross, scarlet, suffering, hyssop, faith. So he takes the living bird, he takes the wood, he takes the scarlet and the hyssop and dips all that in the blood of the first bird that was killed. And with all four, he sprays the leper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the seven sheddings of blood that Jesus accomplished for us. He shed his blood in Gethsemane, the house of Caiaphas, Praetorium, remember, where they first, his sweat became blood. That was number one. Number two, they tore his beard off and buffeted him. Number two. Number three, crown of thorns upon his head. The blood. Number four, he was whipped in his back. Blood was shed. Number five, his hands were nailed. Number six, his feet were, were nailed. Number seven, his side was, was pierced. In fulfillment of this prophecy and other prophecies that the blood had to be shed seven times. Now, the, the minute he sprays with the living bird, the wood, the scarlet, hyssop, all are symbolic of the work of Calvary, and here by faith, hyssop, he's spraying that leper, then he does something amazing. Verse 6, as for the living bird, he will take it and the cedar wood, I'm going to reread this because it's so, so powerful. So I'm going to read verse 6 and now 7, but let, let's just keep, stay with it. So as for the living bird, he will take it and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop, dip them in the blood of the first bird and then spray it seven times. Now watch this, watch this. Oh, I love this. Verse 7. And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and will pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird into the open field. Can you imagine now this living bird is taken off with blood being sprayed everywhere? What is the second bird? His resurrection. And as the bird is flying in the air, the blood that's on its feathers is spraying everywhere because in Hebrews 13 20 it says that Jesus rose from the dead because he shed his blood so the shedding of blood brought the resurrection that's that living bird taken off in the air now watch what happens here this is so so amazing when we go to uh, verse 14 and the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear of the man who's just been cleansed, the leper, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. So the blood now has to be applied. Where? On his ear? on his right thumb and toe. Why? Ah, very good. We have to apply the blood as believers after we've been cleansed from sin and leprosy on our hearing. You know why? I'm going to read you something. You know, I know this is maybe a little deep for some people, but I think sometimes it's good to chew on some good meat, you know? Look what it says in Psalm 55, verse 2 and 3. Attend unto me. Hear me. Now, this is David praying to God. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Why? Because of the voice of the enemy. Because of the oppression of the wicked. For they cast iniquity upon me. In wrath they hate me. Satan is always attacking people's what? Minds. We have to apply the blood on our hearing so our minds would, would be protected. You know, when I hear people say, the devil says this and the devil says that, I'm thinking, wait a minute. 
I thought we were supposed to hear the voice of the shepherd, not the devil. When people talk too much about the devil, I think something is wrong with them. Because my sheep hear my voice. But if we're not walking with God, and we're not protected by the blood, well, then the devil will talk to us. And look what it says in the Psalms. I want to read that one more time. This is, this is powerful. That his words, the devil's words, bring people into iniquity, into sin. Attend unto me. Hear me, David says. I am mourning my complaint and make a noise. So he's crying out. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me. How? With words. The devil's weapon is what? Words. Words. And we have to protect ourselves from what the devil is saying. That's why the application of the blood is vital daily on our minds. Remember what I said that the Lord Jesus wore the crown of thorns and shed his blood from his forehead for the healing and the protection of our minds. What do you hear today? Mental illness. That's all you hear. Mental illness. People are suffering with mental illness and nobody's telling them how to protect themselves from mental illness. The blood of Jesus. It's the blood. The blood is very powerful. You know, you, 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 we, we all sing the song, but nobody, well, sorry to say, but nobody explains the power of the blood that's so powerful. I mean, I don't know if some people even believe that song when they sing, it reaches to the highest mountain, it flows to the lowest valley, the blood that gives me strength, right? From day to day, it will never, never, never lose its power. Because there is power. There's incredible power in the blood. You know, when, when I got saved, we would always sing, There is power, power, wondrous working power in the blood of the Lamb. Well, there is. But here we have to apply it. You know, it's not, uh, uh, how shall I say, it's not enough to just know it happened. We have to apply it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you're redeemed, you speak it out. Our weapon against the enemy is our words. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, you know. We have to speak it. We have to say it. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that will arise against you in judgment, you will condemn. How? By speaking. By breaking the words of the enemy. This is very, very, very important. God never promised that weapons would not be formed. He just said they will not prosper. But wait a minute. When do they not prosper? When we break them. If we don't break them, they will prosper. Let's, let's say it again, okay. No weapon formed against you will prosper, and every tongue that will arise against you in judgment, you, you condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Wow. That God gives us that as our inheritance to have the power to say, no, I break that in the name of Jesus. By the power of the blood of Jesus, I break those words. Because it's the, it's, it's the power of the blood that protects us. So when Andre Crouch wrote that song, he, was, he knew what he, what he was talking about. I'm sure he came from a very godly family that understood the power of the blood. Today, we need that message one more time. With all the mental problems out there. My goodness, listen to this. Today, I don't know what percentage, you can look it up, you can probably do your own research on the percentage of mental problems, mental illness in the world today. It would probably shock most, most of us. The, the answer is the blood of Jesus that has to be applied to our minds. 
You know, I was talking to someone not long ago who told me that the most horrible thoughts hit his mind when he goes to church. He's trying to listen to sermons with the most horrible thoughts. I hear that from other people about these terrible thoughts that come when, when they're trying to hear a sermon or when they're trying to pray, wham, the devil hits them with thoughts. How do we protect ourselves? I just told you. Psalm 55, verse 2 and 3 declare the enemy's weapon against us are words. What did God say here? He said, they put blood on the ear. And then on the thumb, which speaks of our work. And the toe speaks of our walk. But watch what happened then. This is very important. And then the priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. Because see, with his right hand, he's applying blood. Now on his left hand is oil. And what is he, is he to do? And the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand and shall sprinkle, watch this, of the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord, and then, and of the rest of the oil that is in his right, that is in his hand, shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of him. Hold it. He already put the blood, so he put oil on top of the blood. Why? Because when you apply the blood, the oil will always show up. The anointing will always show up. In Ruth 3.3, 3, it says, wash thee and then anoint thee. They come together. You wash and then you get the anointing. So pe people ask me, well, how do you get the anointing? The blood. The blood brings the anointing. Always. So now he puts the oil on top of the blood, not only on the ear, on the earlobe, but then the oil puts, uh, uh, he puts it on top of the, of the blood on the thumb and on the toe. Meaning where the blood is, the oil is. Where the blood is, the anointing shows up. Let me just finish reading verse 17. And of the rest of the oil that's in his hand, shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of him that's to be cleansed, upon the thumb of his right hand, upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the blood, it has to go over the blood of the trespass offering, and the remnant of the oil that is in the priest's hand, he shall pour upon the head of him. Wow. So now he takes the oil, puts it on top of the blood, on the ear, on the toe, or on the thumb and the toe. Then he takes the, the, the oil and puts it right on his head and it starts dripping with oil. What an amazing picture of Pentecost that Jesus dies on the cross, the blood is applied, and then we get anointed. If you really want get, to get anointed, I just gave you the secret. The anointing comes through the blood. Now watch what it says in 1 John. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the in the epistle in the epistle of John. I want to read a portion here. In 1 John 5, I want to begin reading. Verse 7, there are three that bear witness or record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and are one. There are three in heaven who are one, the Father, the Word, or Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And those three agree in one. 
That's 1 John 5, verse 8. So what does it mean? Well, let's just look at verse 7. Where the Father is, the Word is, the Son is. Where the Father is, the Holy Spirit is, because He's one. On earth, let's read it again. Here it is. And these three that bear witness in earth, the Holy Spirit, the water, the blood. And these three agree in one. Meaning, when the Holy Spirit shows up, the power of the blood becomes available. When the Holy Spirit shows up, the Word of God touches people's lives. Now, when I preach the Word, the Holy Spirit shows up. And the power of the blood becomes available through the preaching of the Word. When I apply the blood, same thing happens. The Holy Spirit shows up and the power of the Word comes into action. So think about what I just said. When I apply the blood, the Holy Spirit will show up and the word will have impact because we apply the blood through the word. We say, Father, you said in your word, hallelujah. So this is my teaching today. I want you to begin uh, searching the scriptures and learn more about the blood and how to apply it. But here it was applied on the hearing the working, and the walking. In John chapter 10, Jesus made a marvelous statement. He said, you are clean except your feet. Meaning our walk has got to be washed. In the old uh, covenant, they washed hands and feet. Today we don't have to wash hands because we don't live by work, we live by faith but we have to wash feet because we still touch dirt. Remember that? So I want to apply the blood now on your, on your minds, on your hearing, so Satan would have no access into your mind. I want to apply the blood on your work for the Lord and your walk with him. Come on, stretch your hands towards me. I'm stretching mine towards you, Father, in Jesus' name. Your word declares that the blood was applied upon the ear, upon the thumb and toe of an ex-leper. We're all ex-lepers, Lord, every one of us. But now we're walking with you clean and whole. And Lord God, I apply the blood of Jesus right now on everyone's mind. I apply the blood of Jesus on everyone's thinking, on everyone's minds in the name of Jesus. There will be no mental illness. There will be no mental bondage. There will be nothing but wholeness and beauty. You said whatsoever things are true, honest, of good report, and lovely. Think on these things. Now, Lord, cause your people to think about things that are beautiful and godly and holy by the power of the blood of Jesus, your Son. And also, Lord, I apply the blood on their work and their walk. In Jesus' name, protect them for your glory. Lord, I agree with your people now that financial blessings will come with abundance, with abundance. Because you promised in your word, abundance will come to your people, no matter what conditions are around us. I give you the praise and the glory. Meet every need. Amen and amen. This is the time. I've been telling you that every day. This is the time to give to God's work aggressively with faith. This is the time to prove our love, to prove our faith. Like Paul said in 2 Corinthians, he said, Bring your level of giving up to your faith level. Bring it up to your love level. Bring it up to your knowledge level. So it's important now that we do that, that we aggressively give to God's work to secure our future. Look, people everywhere today are, are 
frightened of what could happen economically. Okay, it's going to happen on earth, not in the church. This is why I plead with you right now to give to God's work to secure your future. So when this collapse comes to the world, because it will, whether it's this or something else, I think what's going on now is just a passing turbulence. It's going to go away. It's what's coming. It's what's coming that we have to think about. Look what just happened with one thing like that's, that's going on. Millions in this country, up I think to 2 million today or maybe even more, have filed for unemployment. We've never seen this happen before. That's the world, okay? But think about what God says. Your, your future will be protected. He'll take care of you. Or we believe this or we don't. I've chosen to believe it. I've not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread is in the word of God. It shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, is in the word of God. Isaac sowed when famine hit because he wanted to show God. He believed his word and he sowed when it didn't make sense to sow. This is our time to sow and our time to prove to God we believe his word. He said, prove me. Remember that? Why prove? Because he wants to show us his power. Prove me now herewith if I'll not open you the windows of heaven. Do it now and watch what God will do with your present and especially your future. I'm more concerned about your future than your present, okay? Because it's the future, it's the things that are coming that will be way worse than this. That's when you have to be secure. But you start planting for it now. You start sowing for it now. You start believing for it now. You start confessing for it now and standing on the promises of God today, not tomorrow. Hallelujah. A faithful man will abound, meaning future, will abound, will abound tomorrow with blessings. Father, we give you praise and we thank you for your promises. Amen.